Okay, so problem 26 is reciprocal cycles. So the problem is to create a lot of fractions by doing 1 over d, where d is going to be less than 1000. And then find which one of these has the longest repeating part of the decimal, so the longest cycle of repeating decimals. So you can see when we do a d up to 10, we get 7 as our answer. And because it has 6 digits that repeat over and over. So, yeah, problem is find the longest one up to a thousand. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a module called decimals, or decimal rather. Um, and what this is going to do is let us, um, basically if we print and then print out like one over seven, So if we run this right now, you see we get like how many decimal places is this? Probably uh, so it's six, twelve, almost eighteen, maybe eighteen, I'm not sure. Um but can't change that as far as I know. Whereas with decimal what we can do is we can say um I think it's this command and then dot um Maybe. And then what we can do is print um, decimal dot decimal one, I think it is, um, divided by decimal decimal seven. This is pretty tedious, but I think this will now work if we print out this. Yeah, so you see we get five decimal places now, and I can change this, I could set this to 50, and this now goes to 50 decimal places. So what we're going to do, because this is really tedious typing this out every time, is we're going to say um, from decimal, import, and then an asterisk. Now what this is going to do is mean that, uh, this, what this is going to mean is that we don't have to put this decimal dot at the beginning. Um, I'm not sure if I've done this before in another video, but basically what this does is imports everything from decimal um, into like our standard library now, rather than us having to like call it through the decimal dot method um, and like say this is the library we're looking for, for it in. It's now in our like working library, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if that's the right way to put it, but that's how I think of it. So. Yeah, it just makes this a bit easier, so if I now save this, you'll see it does the exact same thing. It's just now a bit easier to type out. So, what we're going to do now, knowing we can do this, is we're going to define our main function. Now what this is going to have is it's going to say d, d is a thousand. Let's say for i in range d. Um, we want to generate all these different um, fractions and find which one's the longest cycle. So we're going to say um, so we're going to say find um, cycle length of said D. Uh, I sorry of I and then so this is a function that we're going to code in a sec and we're going to say our um, max our yeah max cycle length is currently equal to zero we don't have one and now once we've got this we're going to say um, so this is going to be our cycle length we're going to say if Find cycle length. Uh, actually, we should probably set this to equal to a variable. So, uh, current cycle is equal to this. And now we're going to say if current cycle is greater than our max cycle, then max cycle is equal to current cycle. Then once we've done that, we'll just print out our max cycle length. Um, 
Is that why it asks for in the question? Does it want the length or does it want the actual number? Uh, find the value of d for which one over d contains the longest recurrence cycle. Okay, so it doesn't want the longest recurrence cycle, it wants the number that produces the longest recurrence cycle. So, what we need for this is we need to record the i, so we're going to say like i that produced cycle that's equal to zero since you don't have one yet. Oh, we'll just set this equal to false. That would probably be the better way to do it since it's not actually zero yet. Um, and then we're going to say so every time the max cycle length changes, this is going to change to whatever i is. And then we're going to print out this. Um, hopefully this makes sense. Basically, if we find a new higher cycle, then we want to record the i that produced it. And at the end, we want to print out whatever that i was that produced the last highest one. Um, hopefully that makes sense. So that will give us our answer there. Once this function here works, um, so time to code this. So we're going to define this. It's going to take in a number n, and what it's going to do with n is it's going to um, produce a decimal representation of it using the decimal module, and then we're going to do long division basically um, on that decimal. So we probably didn't need the decimal module actually, we could have just, because the way I'm going to do it really doesn't need the decimal module. Um, in fact I might just get rid of that right now. Yeah I'm going to I think. Uh, no, let's not, let's just keep it. Why not keep it? So right up here I'm going to call that, fun uh, run that function, the, uh, the set precision one. So what it was now it was get context I think and then um, prec so precision and we're going to set that equal to um, because we know the highest number we're going to test is going to be um, I think we go up to 999 and I think that's why it wants us to do like it doesn't care about thousands and even so a thousand wouldn't produce a, um, a high like cycle length um, so because we're only going up to the number 999, every cycle is going to be less than or equal to, nine, well less than um, 999, so we know that we need at most 999 digits, so I'm just going to set it to 1000, um, and this will give us as many digits as we will ever need for this particular problem. Now. Once we've got this, we can say um, so we're going to say cycle equals uh, cycle length oops, equal to zero, and we're going to say, <coughs> say um, list of remainders is equal to an empty list. Now what list of remainders is going to do is keep track of all the remainders we've had so we know we've got to repeat and then we can like break out and um, hopefully this will make sense in a minute. Now we're going to say while um, <clears throat> we're going to say while true here then we're going to say n um, hold up, so before we go into there we want to say our decimal is equal to one uh, decimal one divided by decimal n If I print this out, I just want to check this is going to work. And then I call my 
in cycle length, we save that. Okay, so I want to call it on the say seven. So this should give us one seventh, but to the precision of a thousand decimal places, is what I'm hoping. this definitely I think it did. So is it a conflict because decimal is also the name of the module? Maybe we should rename it so we'll call it I'll just call it X and then print X. Oh okay I know what it is. It's the lack of capital D right here. And then we can go back to calling this decimal. I think. There we go. So one seventh to a thousand decimal places. Now, once we've got this, we can say oops, while true. Uh, nope. One more thing we need to do. So we need to say. Um, string decimal equal to string um, decimal. Now we're going to say while true. Um, so what we need to do now is we've, we've got the string of this decimal. We need to say take the first. Um, so if I just print this again, this will make it all easier. Um, print string decimal. So you see, we get the exact same thing here, but this time it's just string. So now if I print out the first element of that string, you see we get zero because it's a zero of point one. So if I print out the first if element, should be a point. There we go. And then the second th element, and um, we get a one. So you see, we want to start at one, and we want to say, um, sorry, no, I'm going completely wrong here. I was thinking of doing long division, but we don't actually need to do long division since we've used decimal module to give us this. Um, This long decimal right here. So what we could do is we could test for patterns. So we could use some sort of um, like a scanner that would go over this number and say like look for patterns in the numbers. Uh, I'm not too sure how we do that. I did plan on doing this using long division though, so I might actually just abort this whole decimal thing that I don't know why I started doing. Um, what should I do? I think doing the long division will be more interesting, so let's try doing that. So, for long division we don't actually need this decimal module then it would seem. So I'm just going to comment stuff out in case we do end up needing it, but I don't think we do. So, all this part's fine, this can stay out is. Um, it's just this bit down here, I for some reason thought I would need it. I can't remember what this was. Why this was. So we'll comment this out, comment this out, and we'll comment this out. They're not important. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to say, we're going to say x is equal to 1. Now, while true, we're going to say, if um, 
so if our n goes into our x perfectly, so if uh, if x mod n equal to zero, then uh, we will have. So we're going to say cycle length. Uh, we'll iterate our cycle length right here, and that's so it's having a change of that. Actually, no, that makes no sense. Even though it works, it doesn't actually make too much sense. Let's just start at one, and then add at the end down here. So if x mod n is equal to zero, so if n perfectly divides x, then we can just stop because we found the end of our um, chain. So we're going to say break. Um, we're also going to say x equals 0 just because we can. Now, else, so if it doesn't, then what we want to do is we want to say. Um, x equals x mod n um, and our list of remainders equals so we should have probably appended to this list of remainders right at the start actually rather than adding here um, it should probably go right here because at the minute um, our remainder is going to be this x value, so it's going to be 1. So, this is the remainders, um, actually, we don't want to say equals. So, dot append, and we're going to append x to it. This is one of the harder problems we've done so far. Um, at least for me, it's, at least I'm finding it one of the hardest. So the plan is that this list of remainders will keep track of all our x's and when we get an x that we've already came across before we'll know we're now at the end of the cycle and we can break. Um, so if this equals 0 then we can break and then we need an elif in here. So elif x, um, can you just say in? Possibly, we'll have to see. I'm not too sure if that does work. We don't need this x equals 0 either. I don't know why I keep doing stupid things like this. Um, and then right at the end, out of the while loop, we want to return our cycle length. Okay, so now if we print out what this is returning. So I'm hoping that if we put 2 in here, so obviously 1 divided by 2 gives us 0.5, so I'm hoping that we get a 1 as our return for this. So a cycle length of 1. So we do. Now I'm hoping we don't just get um, an infinite loop for 0.3. It should also give us a 1. It does. This is looking promising. Now if we get a 7, we should get a 6, and we don't, okay, I did save this didn't I, yep, yep. so let's print x every time we go through here, so we only go through once and then we break apparently, so if x mod n is to zero is this where we're breaking uh, so we're just going to print like I'm here always a good way to debug okay, so we're not breaking from here so it's not hitting that wrong it's probably hitting this to be honest I'm not sure if this is the right syntax yes it is so if x is in a list of Ah, right, okay, I know how this is. So, 
X is getting added to our list of remainders um, right here and then getting checked if it's already in there. So what we should be doing is before this bit right here or after these bits um, we should be appending to it I think. Since we break, this doesn't actually need to be in an else. So that there should work. Um, and get rid of that now. Also get rid of that. Okay, so we're looking for a six, and um, we get a two. Why do we get a two? I have a feeling that we're going to be jumping into this again, so let me just print list of remainders and print x. So we get empty and one, and then we get a one and a one, and then we get two, and we don't get our list printed out again. Why not? Over here, it's breaking from. Yeah, it is. So when we are breaking, um, let's print X and list of remainders. So why hasn't x changed? If x is equal to x mod n. Ah, okay. So it's not equal to x mod n. It's equal to um, x times by 10. And then mod n. Um, because each time you divide, or like in long division each time you divide and you get your remainder, that remainder carries over to the next um, zero, so you basically times by 10 each time. And um, hopefully that makes sense. Probably not, that was a pretty bad explanation. Okay, so, for six again, and um, we got seven, interesting. Um, the reason we'll be getting seven is because So let me just check that things such as 2 return. Is it 2's returning 2y? So we're going to get. So cycle length starts at. Alright, oh, okay. We need to start at 0 now because of the way we. Um, yeah, basically we just need to start zero. I won't go into that, but yeah. So we get one for two, which is correct. And so now if I put three in, we should also get a one. Do and if I put seven in, we should get a six. Awesome. And if I put six in, we should get a two. Okay, so now we've got this working. Get rid of that, I call main, and hopefully this gives us our answer. And of course it never. So I think the problem is that we're um, we're taking in like a zero uh, from range like D will it include zero? So we're just gonna say one to D, uh, and then we're going nine eight three, and. You see our answer on here is 983. So yeah, got there eventually, took a little while, it was quite difficult that one actually. But pretty happy with the way we got the answer eventually. Um, particularly because 
this should now scale like the way I was originally going to do it with the decimal module wasn't going to scale up to other numbers so we can get rid of this now definitely no we don't need these um, but you can do things like if you just add another zero on here you can find the longest cycle up to 10,000 takes a while longer like but it'll work Eventually, let's uh, while we wait for this, let's just add in time. Um, oops. Let's just cancel this. Let's uh, put it back to a thousand, see how long this one took. So, 0.25 seconds. Now let's do 2000. So, straight away, this is like 1.7 seconds. So, I'm imagining like this is pretty bad scaling. Um, but let's see, this is probably going to take about 10 seconds or something, I think. Uh, six. So yeah, it's going to take quite a while to find the one up to ten thousand. But if you notice here, um, when we go to like a thousand, it's a very close number to a thousand. When we go to two thousand, it's a, a number very close to two thousand. Three thousand, it's a number very close. And um, there is some theory behind this. Like if you ever study like number theory, um, basically, if you find Basically, there's number theory behind it that tells you, like, you can find, um, it's to do with prime numbers, like 1 over a prime number. You want, basically, a very large prime that's close to the number. So, there is a way that you can do this, where you can work backwards through the numbers. And as soon as you find a cycle length, um, I think it's, the cycle length needs to be, I can't remember exactly, and I don't want to say, like, something in case it's wrong but basically look it up if you're interested and um, there's theory behind it that can help you so you work through the list backwards and obviously when you're doing that you don't need to be checking like 3,000 numbers you only need to check say, 30 numbers until you find this one um, so yeah that would definitely help with the scalability of this method but yeah there's the answer so if you were stuck hopefully it helped and I'll see you in the next video thanks for watching